Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So many of you have been wondering if I'm still going to be doing FPV stuff and definitely I'll be doing those, uh, but not review of every little single piece, you know, so just important stuff. But today we're going to do something a little bit different than usual. So I have a little shopping list that I actually just ordered and I wanted to share it with you guys for future projects. And there's some also really great news. I'm able, well, soon you'll be able to control anything with another phone, such as your quadcopter. So you could put a phone in that quadcopter and control it from your other phone while you have a transmitter if you want connected to it. So there's a lot of progress being made there, controlling things over 2G, 3G, and even 4G. So uh, currently I'm building a little arsenal of tutorials in order to get you to that level and then we could go there. And what's really nice with this is you'll be able to, hopefully by the end of my tutorials and lessons, be able to accomplish that to anything else you want. So first, I just picked this up but I have no idea what the hell comes in the package and I don't, I don't recommend you pick it up just yet until we see what the hell's in this package. I looked everywhere online to find something about this, nothing. So I decided to take the plunge here and just try it out. So saying it takes 24 volts, but what's really interesting is these wheels. Uh, this will give it so much flexibility and you could even drift in slow motion. And I'll show you what I mean later on once we get to that level. So there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with this. So that's one thing I've ordered. Now we also, I've also ordered some more microcontrollers. For example, the Raspberry Pi Zero W. Now, why did I order this? Well, well the thing is, I'm afraid, you know, the ESP32 won't be able to broadcast live video. And I know for a fact this would. So if you really needed like real good broadcast live video, then this is kind of the implementation. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of Raspberry Pi and ESP32s. I'm mainly concentrating on budget stuff first. And for larger projects, we might have to step up. And that's why I'm preparing myself. Now, it's very important with the Raspberry Pi that you get the W, uh, the zero W, because the W means it'll have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth or else you just you don't really need it. Uh, this one also I picked up. Actually, this one I got for free, to be honest. I requested it and they applied, they approved to give it to me for free. So it's another Raspberry Pi W, but with a camera module. So this gives me two now. And um, yeah, I just thought it was really nice to see the case and maybe I could make a better case that takes uh, 18650 for it. So we could play around with this as well. And uh, also I picked this up here for future videos and projects, uh, the basic stuff. Uh, how to, I'm gonna be showing you how to get this live sensor data back live to your phone and also enable you to control most of this stuff. Uh, through your phone as well and um, yeah it's going to be pretty interesting I have a lot of things planned for us uh, this one here this is an ESP32 with 2G connectivity so you put a sim card and if your if your network allows 2G connectivity then you theoretically have internet however the way you co connect with this is you don't really connect directly to the internet this thing would be connected and then you would have to send these like commands like at connect at send so it's not the most efficient and it's not the most low latency way to do it but i did pick one up just in case it could be very useful for applications where latency is not a super big deal the latency will still be pretty low but um you know controlling something very specific that might not work out but i don't know yet and that's the reason why i picked it up to test it out and see what i come up with Another one here, this one is really nice and it's it just really has one use case. So this is an ESP32, which means you have Wi-Fi, you have a camera. It's not the best camera, it's a decent camera. You have OLED, I could live without the OLED, but that's the only module that came with it. And you have a motion sensor. So this is really great, especially with the app. I know for a fact this will be able to, at least I could code it, to take a picture and upload the picture for you. And... This way, if some movement happen, you'll know what the hell's going on, uh, especially through the app, like live data feed. Uh, but we'll also, I'll also be testing with this one if I am able to output some sort of a video stream in a way over a web socket um, to to give you like a live data feed of what's going on. Now, what's really cool with the web sockets I've done, I've done it through SSL, so we have some encryption, which is better than MQTT. And also nothing is saved. Anything in the live sensor data, nothing is saved. So when you pop out, it's all gone. Nothing's in there. So the, the data that you're constantly receiving is just in your phone while you're connected. Once you disconnect, boom, everything's gone. And that's the way I want to keep it. Maybe later on we could do some other variations of this that allow you to choose if you want to keep some of that data. And uh, But we'll take it one step at a time. The app is going to be getting a lot more upgrades as well. So this is one interesting sensor and definitely you should pick yourself up some ESP32s and ESP8266s if you want to follow along because I'll be mixing and matching between them, whatever I have laying around here, um, as you can tell, kind of. So whatever is next to me, usually I grab, but I do make the tutorial for both things. And the best part of all here, 
So, and the best part of all, all these tutorials is I'm actually documenting every single one with the code and documentation. So everything will be in order, everything will be structured, the project so you can follow along and just about everything you need. So it's not just a video and if you get lost, you could also come here and write something in the issues and I'll help you there or you could email me. So yeah, I'm creating this really big tutorial that'll get everybody going into MicroPython. And not only that, I don't know if many of you have been watching my stories on, on, on YouTube, um, I was able to successfully compile a MicroPython firmware for our flight controllers. Not only that, I was able also to write the drivers for the MPU 6000 gyro over SPI so we could take full advantage of its speed. Uh, the barometer is, is already available, so I didn't have to, I don't need to reinvent the wheel if I don't have to. So the, the barometer was, most of the barometer's drivers are already available. And you're like, well, what the hell is that useful? Well, that gives you a complete robotic development or DIY development board with regulators and sensors already built in that you could take full advantage of. So for example, the best example would be I may take a 405 wing. You have all these servo outputs, which you could change to 12, 9 volts, or even 5 volts for the servo outputs. And you also have the barometer on there. You also have a gyro on there if you needed that. You have your I squared C broken out. You have your, I think, some of the SPI broken out. And I'm currently in the talks with Maytech to design a custom one for, for future projects. And there's a lot of things that are going to be upcoming. So I'll be doing a lot of MicroPython tutorials that are related to drones and will eventually sink into the drone part, but I need to get you up to speed. And I've made everything to help you do that from preparing the environment to controlling the LED, which is gonna be the next video. Um, I already have the code already out here and I'll have this link down below as well. So we can, everything will be in the MicroPython projects. You'll have a folder for each microcontrol unit where I do projects for. So right now, for example, we have ESP32. Actually, let's go to ESP8266. I have the tank project, which is still not complete here until I release the video. But right now, the cloud LED control basic, which means it'll allow you to control a switch over the cloud. And I'll explain how that works. So we'll be able to control an LED, but obviously you could modify this to anything else to control because everything is really controlled with a positive voltage or a negative voltage. The basic stuff, the PWM will come next where you could actually set what kind of what kind of voltage you want it to output, for example, dimming an LED or moving a servo. That's when PWM kicks in or even a speed of a motor. But right now it's just either on or off and we take it one step at a time. I get you up to speed and then you'll be able to come up with your own creative stuff. And uh, eventually we'll do some proper projects as long as well as these basic tutorials as they go along. And obviously FPV is still in the mix. It has to be. And well, that's really it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Everything's linked down below. Check it out. If you want to follow along, go ahead. Uh, about this one, don't pick it up until I, I actually receive it and see how good it is If uh, so you don't waste your money by accident. And um, I'll take the hit for you guys. So, yeah, just yeah, just, just letting you guys know. Um, let me just get this and see what the hell comes in the package because it makes absolutely no sense. And, well, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.